wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be gamble the globe not in my office but also still not in vegas but i'm gonna talk today about drinks why does it take so long why are we keep waiting for drinks and what is it being done to improve it well the answer is going to kind of shock you or maybe it won't i'm going to go over about drink times what the changes are in the last 20 years and what the current state of Las Vegas drink service is. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. I'm gonna go over the dry erase board so we're gonna see how great my editing is because I'm gonna do that. Here we go, dry erase board. So here is an imaginary grid of a casino that doesn't exist, but it's easier to understand in a grid form. So the way it works is each drink server works a section. Now we're gonna flash back 20 years. The way it used to work is, I gotta have my pen. The way it used to work is there would be two drink servers in each section, which would be great. So imagine a section just as you will, let's just say it's a 50 by 50 area. Um, these sections sort of vary on size depending on tables, machines, what's in them. A typical section that you'd notice would be easy to see geographically would be a pit area. That may be one or two sections depending on how large. If it is a 12 table pit area, then it would most likely be two sections. You gotta consider that each table would be five seats, if you say like Blackjack, Ultima Texas Hold'em, Pi Gal, and then a roulette table would have up to eight players. And then if that includes a craps table, that could have up to 16 players. So you kind of have to understand that it varies quite a bit with the amount of people. So two servers per section back 20 years ago. This was a very efficient system. Um, one would come around and take care of half the section. The other one would take care of the half the section. So it worked really well. There's always drinks flowing essentially. So Vegas in their ultimate wisdom decided, wait a minute, can we do more with less? The answer is yes, you can. So what they did was one per section, one drink server per section now that used to take two. So worked as really good still. The drink servers had to work a little harder. Um, you know, drinks took a little bit longer time. Then we had the pandemic hit. So pandemic hit. This is where it's going to get a little crazy. All right, so during the pandemic, because of shortages, because of staffing and everything else, one server per four sections. One per four sections. So now this wasn't necessarily a complete fall to the casinos. Uh, both staff, the casinos themselves weren't very popular, so you didn't populate it, so you didn't need a whole lot of drink servers to handle that. So it really wasn't a huge impact onto the wait staff. Well, now we're coming out of the pandemic. People are going back to Vegas. What happened? So what they've now done is they've done one per two sections, which essentially is what's going on now. One drink server per two sections. Roughly speaking, um, in a pit area, you're talking about 60 to 80 people in a pit area. That's a lot of drinks to serve. Remember those drink trays are essentially a 18 inch round and they're holding maybe 15 drinks, maybe 20 if they really pack them in tight. And so that's at least four trips for each time they come around. Now also consider the a space that a server has to go to. So this is the casino floor, but their bar area Maybe over here or over here. So if their bar areas are so far away, that area is a little bit easier to see, they're having to make that trip back and forth. Now, obviously, shorter trips are easier, but remember, it's a larger area too. So in the further infinite wisdom of Vegas, they wanted to introduce efficiency. So what they did, and this is coming from an ARIA, two ARIA um, drink servers, and what they said was, there's no bartender anymore that they work with. 
They used to work with a bartender. That bartender would take that order, the drink server would give them the order in a certain order. Like you would have to say your well drinks first, your bottle drinks, those kind of things. And it was actually a very efficient system. The drink server themselves would get the beer bottles and things like that that were quick and all that. And the bartender would make the mixed drinks. Um, it was actually a very neat system. If you watched it, if you were at the bar when this happened, it was, you know, fairly neat. Um, so now there's robotic bartenders. So now the same drink server that used to do one section or, you know, even then to share the section is now doing two sections and having to program in the drinks for the robot bartender to make and get beer bottles at the same time. So this further adds a delay. The delay even compounds when it gets busy because they're having to fill up their tray. They know how many drinks fill up a tray. Go back, go to the robot bartender, wait for those drinks to be made by the robot bartender, come back. Most likely those people you're dropping off the drinks to are ordering another drink. I do anyway. I always order a second drink when the server comes around because I know it's gonna take them a long time. I don't blame the server at all. They're working as hard as they can. You wanna see someone run a lot. I'd like to see a pedometer attached to some of these ladies and see how great they do. Uh, how many steps they do in a day. I bet you it's amazing. I bet you it's like a marathon each day. So going to robot bartender and back, getting drinks and back. The length of time coming back and forth is getting nuts because they may or may not have one really close by. If you think about someone who's over here, you know, drink server over here, they got equal distance to go to either bar. So when you're waiting for your drink, think about, hey, what are they going through? What their day is like? Something else to consider is tipping. Um, I realize that you're playing a game. You may or may not be winning, but try to remember these are servers. Let me go with a couple of myths real quick as well about servers that I've heard. So for one, they do not pay for the drinks. The drinks do have a dollar value assigned to them. That is what the casino uses to write off that as a marketing expense. But those servers do not pay for those drinks. They do not have to pay for those. They do not have to upfront the money for those. They make a good wage. Um, servers make a decent wage. Um, none of them complained about what they got paid, uh, the ones I asked. Uh, but they did say some people don't tip at all. So how much to tip? This is a personal preference. Like all tipping, it's a personal preference. If you want to tip more, absolutely tip more. However, common tipping for per drink in Vegas at this approximate time is a dollar to two dollars per drink depending on your server. I have given more to a server, absolutely, but I never give less. Um, a dollar per drink is pretty fair. Um, back in 20 years ago, it used to be 50 cents a drink. So you give them a dollar every other drink. But now I think, you know, inflation, and everything else, a dollar per drink. Now keep in mind, that's a do dollar per drink per person on average. So if you've got 80 people in a pit area, they're able to do that pit area in a 20 minute time span. They're making $160 every 20 minutes. That's pretty good. They do split those tips with any other bartender that does exist and the rest of the people on the floor. Most of the time in casinos, tips are split. Whether you're a dealer, a drink server, wait staff of other kind, or housekeeping, all those drinks, uh, all that money is split. Uh, same thing goes for slot attendants. Uh, that money is generally split out among everybody, uh, among the floor workers. So always tip your waitress, expect some delays. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story here from Bellagio. I was playing Bellagio at roulette table. Um, I was spending $150 a spin. Gentleman next to me was spending 2000 a spin. We sat there for about two and a half hours. One drink server came by. This is a high limit table in Bellagio, which essentially is high limit as soon as you walk into it. Um, that drink server actually came by and said, I'm not taking orders, I'm just delivering. And we're like, well, who's taking orders? The, she pointed across the room to another pit area. These two servers were actually working 
one pit area each. One was taking orders, one was delivering orders. But because they weren't communicating, what they were doing was taking the same orders and delivering the same orders repeatedly. Those people ordering a second drink were getting theirs first instead of that moving around. So always keep in mind, drink servers aren't necessarily to blame. They're hard workers. Make sure to tip them. And remember to like, share, subscribe to this video. I'm gonna bring you more information soon. Gamble smart, gamble safe.